Borino here. Welcome to the Casa de Borino Worldwide Marketing Headquarters. This video is specifically for you if you are a newer agent. If you've been in the business for two years or less and have a little hard time with expired listings, converting them into leads, listings, and commissions, then you'll like this video. If you're a seasoned veteran, you can still stick around. Maybe you'll pick up an idea or two, but I'm talking to you specifically newer agents. All right. It started with a couple of emails I received yesterday and today. First one came from Norma. She's writing, Hi Barino, I received your free letters for the expired listings and listened to your demonstration, the seminar I recorded for RedX. And while your technique sounds great for a new agent, the last sentence where you offer the documented result is really not possible for someone starting out. Yeah, good point. How do you get the sellers as a new agent to trust your ability to produce results? That's important. How do you have sellers trust you? If you're new really good question Norma similar one came, came from John who says dear Borino I'm a new agent love real estate good attitude John <laughs> but new to selling real estate what would you recommend to someone who is just getting started to build trust and confidence in their clients similar question how do you do that what is the trick well I'll give you a couple of suggestions some ideas and tips that you can implement right away and uh, turn expires into listings it can be done even for a newer agent it's a little more challenging I'll give you that it is not as easy as if you've been at it for 10 15 years but then again you also have certain advantages that you may not be aware of so let's get started number one mental attitude now you're probably going duh of course Barino come on that's too obvious but think about it you in your mind have to believe you can get the job done and I'm not talking about that belief that rah-rah on the surface. I mean deep in your heart. Can you really walk up to a seller and look them in the eye and be totally honest with them and tell them, I can get your home sold. I know I can get the job done. Because friend, if you can't do that, then no amount of clever marketing, great expired package, resume, scripts, dialogues, none of that matters. It simply makes no difference. If deep in your heart you don't believe you can get it done, you're the pro that the seller should hire. You're worth the 10, 15, 20 thousand dollar commission. If you don't believe that deep inside on a subconscious level that there is nothing else you can do to fix that because subconsciously, non-verbally, you will communicate that to the seller and the seller will pick up on it. It simply is a fact. There's no way around it. So start there. There are some things you can do on the mind side of it, of course. You know, one of the things I always like to do, and you know that, is I believe in visualizations. I believe seeing myself as a successful agent, writing listings on the board, driving a nice car, making money. Uh, put a dream board together. You know, I have one right here that's hanging there with all my dreams and goals. So do that. Do the mental exercises those are very important look for blocks things that your core belief believes you held or hold still do that are holding you back it could be like I'm not good enough I don't deserve the money I'm too new I don't have the skill and eliminate those so that's the mind portion of it and really be honest with yourself that's really important the second is the practical part of it before we get into marketing you do have to become an expert so on one side, you exercise your mind, you do the visualizations, you become convinced on the inside that you can do it, but there are also practical things you can be doing. First thing I would suggest for the next three, maybe four weeks is become a market expert. That's critical. You have to know listings, sales, pendings, and expired inside out. You gotta know your marketplace. You gotta know what's going on. You have to be so good that even without CMA, you walk into the property, look around, and be very accurate in terms of its value. So no prices. Preview property daily. Pick five, six listings every day. Go take a look. New property sold, drive by. Take a note. What did it sell for? And here's a little bonus, a little exercise I used to do at the beginning that helped me uh, become very good in determining market value. I would take a property that recently sold and not look at the listing or the sales price. I would put together a CMA, go preview the property, preview a couple other comps that I used in my CMA and try to determine an accurate property value. And then I would look at the actual sales price to see how off I was. Do this every day for the next seven days and see how well you do, how well you can become a property expert. Okay? So that's really important. So number one, mental. Number two, become a property expert. Become 
the, the, the neighborhood expert, so to speak, or the market expert. Third thing I would suggest you do is get knowledgeable. Now this is beyond just understanding prices. Know what it takes to list a property. What are the steps? How do you put it in the MLS? What about the paperwork? Uh, what about the marketing process? Getting the flyers done, putting the lockbox on and on and on and on. All those steps that you need to take. How do you put it on Realtor.com? How do you do the virtual tours, taking photographs? All that. You need to become an expert. The fastest way for me, this is what really worked for me when I first started, is I took a very successful agent who was really good, cranking out a lot of listings. I took him to lunch a few times. We became friends. I brought him coffee once in a while. I helped him with the lockbox. If he needed to put a lockbox on, boom, jumped in my car and helped him. And uh, it was genuine. I didn't try to pretend or you know cheat or anything. I just wanted to see how he worked. And after a while, he, we became friends, and he showed me. I had a chance to look over his shoulder to see how he operated. I even had a chance to sit on a couple of his listing appointments, which was really terrific. So a good way for me to quickly learn and pick up ideas. So do that. Become friends with experienced agents. And you'll notice that many agents, especially the really successful ones, are really cool people. They don't mind sharing. They don't mind showing you because their mind is an abundant mind. They live in abundance. They don't live in fear of scarcity. And I have to protect my little business. You know, nobody's like that that is truly successful and wealthy. So find people like that in your office or in your area and uh, see if you can pick up the brain. And it's a quick way to learn. Now, of course, read books, um, go to seminars uh, online. There are tons of resources. Your brain has to be like a sponge absorbing all this information. Keep in mind, some of it will come with experience. There's just no way around it. You have to simply get around the block a few times on the bike before the training wheels can come off. So it does take time but you can help it and you can accelerate it, okay? So, mind, take care of that. Uh, practical stuff, know your market, know the steps, become an expert, know what it takes, what it actually takes to get a listing sold. And then finally, to adjust your marketing, and by marketing, I don't necessarily mean just the resume, of course, that of course is important, the letters and all that, but also in your mind, how you perceive yourself as a marketing expert. Come up with a list of benefits. Think about it this way. You and I are on a listing appointment. I'm the seller, you're the listing agent, and I pop a question. So, what makes you special? What makes you different? Why should I trust you with the sale of my house? And uh, what will you do different? Why not hire Mary or John down the street? What makes you unique? How do you earn the 10, 15, $20,000 commission? You have to be ready to answer. Genuinely, honestly, but effectively. That means anything that matters to the seller, you have to have on the ready. When I first started in real estate, I had a client. It was in Downey, California, Mrs. Beringer. I remember to this day. Older lady. She knew I was new in real estate. It was an expired listing, one of my very, very first listings. But she was on my side. She wanted me to succeed. She wanted me to do well in real estate. She was my fan, almost like my mom at the end. And. Uh, I never pretended, I knew more than I did, but I did the best job I could possibly have done for her. And at the end it all worked out, we got the property sold, she was happy. Yes, some sellers like experienced seasoned veterans, no way around it. And if that's the case, there's not much you can do, oh well. But many sellers, like Ms. Behringer and many others, prefer enthusiasm which is what I had. Uh, willingness to work. I was willing to jump in the car and show the property on Sunday at 7 p.m. if I had to, if the buyer called on the sign. Many seasoned veterans, uh, they don't have to. They got plenty of listings, they got plenty of money, they got rentals, they got referrals, one commission here and there doesn't matter that much. A lot of them are burned out. So use that to your advantage. What else do you have? Technology? Are you up on Twitter and uh, virtual tours and blogging and Web 2.0? Do you understand all that? Many of the old timers don't. Now, before I go any further, I am not knocking old timers. Don't get me wrong. Many of my colleagues and good friends and some of my students have been in this business for 30 years and they understand this business inside out and they understand the technology inside out. I'm not talking about years in business, I'm talking about mentality. You understand the difference? By the old timer, I mean that stale, rigid, old way of doing business that's slowly dying out. So if you can 
find an angle for yourself that opposes that, that offers something fresh and new. Beyond just the usual, you know, oh, I'm honest. Well, duh, everybody's honest. Of course, I would not talk to an agent who's not honest. But what's more? What more do you bring to the table? So make a list. Now, in addition to being able to present it effectively to the seller, use it in your marketing. Use it. Remember the brochure? Mention it there. List some of the accomplishment. List some of, some of the skills you have, some of the unique attributes you bring to the table. Make sense? And then finally, to really leverage the marketing pieces that I offer to you, like the brochure or the letter that Norma mentioned too, where I specifically say, well, some of my results or some of the properties I sold or some of my clients, very simple way around it. You may not have them yet, and that's fine. They're coming, but for now, simply use your office. Use your office as your leverage. Instead of saying, I sold my clients, replace them as we did, we sold, our office did. Use your office as leverage. Use your track record, your office track record. Present it as, this is what we do. So you're presenting the company in the best light possible. You're presenting as, here's a little marketing army behind me of my colleagues that will help me get this property sold for you, Mr. Seller. And then you just simply list them as, this is what we did. This is what we did in the last six months. Plus, make some friends in the office, go to them and tell them, would it be okay if I used your client's testimonial on a company presentation where I'm putting in my marketing together so that the seller is not specifically talking about that particular agent, but such and such company did a really good job. I was really pleased with the way XYZ Real Estate represented me in the sale of my house. So use those at the beginning. And trust me, if you stick with it, if you keep going, it's just a matter of time before you get some happy clients. The good news is you don't really need a whole lot of testimonials. Three, four good testimonials really will get the job done in your marketing to show the seller that you can get the job done. All right? So I hope this helps. I hope this inspires you and shows you that it really can be done. Remember, I was once a new agent. I was exactly where you are today, looking for answers, not understanding completely how to compete with those that had large inventory and had a, a years and years of experience. Oh, here's another tip before I go. I forgot this one. I was on a listing presentation and I was going against an agent that had a monster inventory, lots of listings. It was a team. They had two agents plus two assistants. It was difficult to compete with someone like that. They had a big budget, of course, you know, did a lot of advertising. So this is what I did. Rule number one, never knock your competition. Never put them down. You do it indirectly. So what I did was I spoke with the seller and I said, you know, this is a great choice. These people do a lot of business. They carry a huge inventory. Downside to that is, do you really want to entrust your property to someone who will treat it just as another number? I mean, think about it. I keep inventory very small so that I can give it personal attention. I can be here on Saturday night and show it at 8 p.m. if I have to. I will do whatever it takes to get this property sold. Now, if I had 50 listings on the market, would I care that much? Maybe, maybe not. But you as a seller, are you willing to take that chance? Again. I was not knocking them, but I showed them that if an agent has 50 listings and one expires, it's no big deal to them. They make enough money. They get plenty of business. They don't care that much. I, on the other hand, was hungry. I was hungry to work, eager to work, eager to succeed. I wanted to make sure that sucker actually sold so I could get paid. Now, I, of course, didn't want to be this desperate talking to the seller and show them how bad I wanted the listing. Remember, you never need the listing. You just want it. But they got, I got my point across, and I did get it that way. So use your enthusiasm, use your strength. I'm sure you got a lot of it going for yourself. So just bring it up to the surface. Make sense? All right. I hope this helped. I hope this showed you that there absolutely is a way for you to succeed with expireds and in real estate in general. This can be a good time for you. There are plenty of expireds out there, lots of opportunities to make money and succeed. Okay, this is it for now. Shoot me an email if you have any questions. Borino at expiredplus.com. I'll talk to you soon. Now go out there and get some expires. Go get them.